I'm really looking forward to this one, uh, just because I think it'd be interesting for the boys, and I think it's gonna go, oh, go down a treat. <laughs> I'm so glad I get to end it and that gets cut. Hey guys, and welcome to another chapter of the Moat Chronicle. Woo! I'm excited, as always. Let's go. So today, I bought something special for the boys. Mm -hmm. Special. Special. Let's see. Do you want to see what it is? Yeah, want we want to see what it is. Come on, let's just see how special this is. Really? Okay, when I say special, I'm not saying expensive. <laughs> oh, <laughs> fantastic. But special, yes. Oh, okay. Unique, yes. Wow. Interesting, yes. Haha, -ha. where's the side in that? Wow. That is interesting indeed. Let's move on to the blind taste and yeah. see how these bundies go on there. Yeah. Very interesting color for a black and white shoot. Wow. Wow. Tropical fruits. Getting like mangoes. A little whisk of like uh, papaya. I definitely get a lot of sweet fruits like papayas, melon. No, it does. It does reminds me of a lot of exotic fruits. Fresh pastry, custard, pan raisin, pan raisin. Okay, it's got an interesting. Uh, the entry is fantastic. It really invites you with that lovely, sort of zesty, sweet notes that come through. The mid palate it really opens up into a little hint of ginger and spice, uh, but then that finished, I just would have liked it to be a little bit longer. Um, it like leaves you a bit dry. It's like a dry finish. It's not really harsh, but it's very dry. Like it drinks your mouth. Mint, black pepper, green apricots. If I would mix all of that, judging the tannins, I would say around 60 pounds, 40 pounds. I would give it a three and a half stars. I would give it a three stars. Woo! Okay. Mm. I didn't get the cider. And yeah, no, I didn't I definitely did not, get, did the not get the cider. <laughs> That is interesting. So, wow, okay, please, please tell us. Um, I love Glenmorey. Yeah. Before, before we get started, I absolutely love Glenmorey. I love the brand. I love what they're doing. I love the fact that they're doing something different here, yeah. using a cider cask and being a bit more experimental. Um, but there, there, there is a slight problem with this product. Please, indulge us. Enlighten us. Enlighten us, sorry, enlighten us. It's missing something on the front. H. It's zero. Yeah, it's mentioning it. Okay. Okay. Um, and they didn't leave it long enough in the cider cask. They mm. use some really cool cider casks. They use probably some of the best cider casks in Scotland. So uh, this thistle court cider. So that's the uh, that's the name of the company that they use to get the cider cask. So what they did was lent them some barrels to produce mm -hmm. some cider yep. to make cider aged in whiskey barrels. Then brought them back and quickly <coughs> filled them up with some spirit. To try and get some of that influence from the from the cider cask in the into the whiskey, but what I do think they've done is not left it for anywhere near as long as they should have. Okay. Yeah. Anywhere near the, as long as they should have, they sh really should have been giving that a little bit more time to mature. But who knows? It could be something really interesting in the future. But at the moment, they're still missing something here. But that's not to take away from Glenmorey as a product. Because I think that they produce some fantastic whiskies. We've actually got one here. Hell oh, yeah! Oh, oh yeah! I love. Uh huh. Yeah. So this is another product from Glenmorey that I do genuinely love, and I also know that cider cask work because uh -huh. I've had a cider cask. Oh. Okay. Is, oh yeah. I remember this one. That is we very interesting. But the problem being is just you, yeah, you man. Get, that's all apples. You get. Smell that. You get but to be fair, you do get a lot more apples. more apples. I'm getting you get apples a lot in more this. In this. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, the maturation on it's a little bit. Yeah, a little bit longer inside the casks. Mm -hmm. So, um, 
something to remember when you do this next time, Glenn Murray. <laughs> but this is this is a um, limited edition. Limited. So they only did two thousand bottles of this. Um, get it whilst you can get it because of they are selling out quick. Quick. It's only available in the UK at the moment. Okay. But it might be that some websites are starting to sell it internationally now. All oh, right. Um, probably not legally, but they are <laughs> doing it. <laughs> I'm not going to promote that too much. Exactly. Legally boring. <laughs> <laughs> boring. But um, yeah, no. Um, Glamouray have six stills. They uh, produce actually quite a lot of spirit for quite a small company. Yeah. Um, the boys already know this, so I don't want to bore them too much. But mm -hmm. they used to be owned by um, the big brand Glenmorangie. Yeah. Moet Hennessy, mm -hmm. and um, uh, they sold it because of it's not. Premium enough for them. They want some. They yeah. want a luxury brand, yeah. a luxury product. It didn't sort of fit their sort of uh, what what they wanted to put out as uh, what what their image of their company. So Glen Moray and Glen Morangi, they were sister distilleries yeah. as far as we know. And uh, when they were acquired by uh, Louis Vuitton Moore Hennessy, they decided to focus on just one. So Glen Moray was sold, and they focused solely on the Glen Morangi. Mm. Yeah. And um, as I say, um, this is. Unique. They're bringing out a whole portfolio on the Glen um, Glen Moray different finishes with different finishes. Okay. So it's called Elgin Curios Curiosity. Elgin, Elgin. Curiosity. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Sorry, I did know it was on the bottle. Uh -huh. and that's why I didn't memorize it. Yeah, um, but yeah, so it's part of. They're going to be producing so lots of good products that are experiments. So you might get some more releases like this. Also. At your strength, but they're going to get more releases like this where they're producing something that's just a little bit special. Mm -hmm. So, like, they already have some poor cast finishes, and the one that we showed you earlier that's actually a Chardonnay full maturation full for mat 10 years. But try and find it anywhere because I'm pretty sure it's sold out everywhere now. Is the Chardonnay sold out everywhere? Yeah, I can't find it. Wow, okay, um, they yeah. stopped doing that. Seriously. I think they still produce it, but they don't actually have any to sell at the moment they're, okay. they're aging it but um, it's something that was brought in by one of their old master distillers and um, uh, the new master distiller uh, Graham Klein. I, I apologize if I pronounced that wrong I have tried <laughs> and stop mind. saying sorry for these guys <laughs> no I'm apologizing I, if I pronounced it wrong I, I am sorry please don't kill me um, but we do love Glen Moray um, I'm, I know that the boys love it as well I know yeah. that they love what they're doing the Chardonnay one was uh, we, we all agreed we really really enjoyed that yeah, as yeah. you say, it bang for buck. Definitely, yeah. bang for buck. I hate when he says that. Unfortunately, <laughs> I don't think that this one is as much bang for buck as that one. Mm -hmm. How much is that? Uh, this is fifty two ninety five. Fifty two ninety five. From the whiskey exchange. That's a lot, man. And that's that's, that's a lot for something that. I was expecting a lot from. Yeah. And definitely. didn't get half as much as what I wanted when I. Bought this product, I thought, wow, wow, it's going to be the best review we've ever done because we love this product. And yeah, it is missing. It is at forty six point three percent. So I, I also expected it to carry yeah. itself a little bit longer. But I do think it's quite quick on the palate. It is very quick on the finish for but sure. On the taste, you are getting those toffee notes yeah. that we met. That you guys mentioned earlier on in the blind tasting. You're also getting uh, vast mentioned um, uh, pastry. Uh, in his oh, blind tasting, mm -hmm. which you do pick up in a French way, uh -huh. and both of them, <laughs> both of the boys, just said about exotic fruits, yeah, and they exotic do come fruits. through. Definitely, exotic so fruits come through. It reminds me of the Caribbean, but yeah. when they talked about age, I didn't get the age with it, and I, it didn't carry through. I noticed that it was a little bit younger. That's that's what gets me. It smells vibrant. Oh, it's it's like, it explodes. It's like, but wow. when you try it, it's so bitter. It so mm. fades and, and shrinks your mouth. And I couldn't... Uh, and I was saying it's, it's like a fancy cask, whatever it is. Mm. But the delivery on the palate is not as good as on the nose. The yeah, nose it reminds me of pear cider. The nose really reminds me of pear cider. But the palate just doesn't carry that through. Oh, fair enough, fair enough. Um, do you know what? It really does. Um, it says fifty-two pounds. Really? Yeah. I mean, I was just wow. Okay. So, I'll, but I think it's all. If this that price, it's got to be because it's there's only two thousand bottles made. And I, oh yeah. I, I believe, believe that's, I believe that's what the price about. point is. It's got to be. And unfortunately, yeah. yeah. If they just kept it for a bit longer and produced something a little bit older, we could be talking about Absolutely. something that all three of us were sat there yeah. blowing it. Because blowing yeah, we out. genuinely do like the other whiskies they produce. Like this to us, uh, yeah, this is uh, 
like you said earlier, this is a 100% maturation in Chardonnay casts and it just comes across more interesting. So you can buy two of these for the price of that. For the price of that. Yeah. Wow. Unfortunately, yeah. Mm -hmm. and, um, well, it's a good experiment. Yeah, it was I'm glad they did the experiment yeah. and it's the same as the other week we did Fire and Cane and we said that we love the experiment and we do love the experiment. Mm. And, you, and you brought the bottle, you said it. <laughs> <laughs> Smart ass. So, um, Smart ass. We, uh, we, yeah, as I say, we we always bring, I like these experiments, I think they're interesting. I like when someone does something different. Yeah, so definitely. I'm not going to say this all, is awful, awful whiskey, that. it's terrible. I'm just going to say that if it were my money, I probably won't be buying a second one. Mm. Yeah, no, I completely agree with what you boys are saying. But packaging-wise, you know, it does look a bit more premium uh, than what they have launched before. Uh, I do like the tube better, but uh, still the box wise, it's, it's more premium, definitely looking more premium. It's all yours, you can eat it. <laughs> <laughs> we'll take the whiskey, you take the box. Eh? <laughs> I'm not saying that you're not going to drink the whiskey as well. Now, I know that someone has a fact, and I know that all three of us are probably itching to score this. Yes, yeah, you do the scores. So let's do that. I'm going to crack on. I'll give you another fancy fact. Mm -hmm. Competition. So, uh, as whiskey industry is all about trade between the brands and the distilleries, like trading whiskey for blending or like trading barrels for finishing, apparently the Japanese distilleries very rarely trade casks with one another due to how competitive the market is. Guys, <laughs> relax. Where's the fun in that? Come on. Aren't there only two brands though producing? Japanese whiskey. There's loads of them now. Yeah, I thought well. there were only two. So, no. <laughs> we like a friendship, as you can see, at least in this part of the world. Share. <laughs> yeah, sharing is caring. caring. So sharing good. is caring. It's a good one to do with the, the thistle. <laughs> <laughs> so, so we get straight down to brass tacks, as I like to say, and uh, we're going to start from this side, and then we're going to come back to uh, me, and then we're going to go to David. So, I gave it an 18. The nose is absolutely phenomenal, the palate is slightly disappointing, uh, but I respect and I encourage other distilleries to start experimenting, as this is what's going to push the new boundaries further. Absolutely, I completely agree about the nose. For me, it was fantastic on the nose, on the palate, it just sort of fell, and so I gave it a 79. For me, that, that finish was just not quite there. On the, on the palette. So, as I said, I want every distillery to be doing experiments, but for me, this is an experiment, just not quite made it, so I gave it a 78, mm -hmm. and uh, it's quite a low score, but needs a little bit more time. Yeah, if it was just a little bit longer in the cider cars, I think we would have uh, had a really nice uh, whiskey there. So, we told you a bit about us, now it's time for you to tell us about you. So, have you tried any experimental whiskies that you want to talk about? Have you tried this experimental whiskey that's right in front of us? Oh, and on that note, I'd like to say cheers, and we're more chronicles, and we out! <laughs>